But now I want to explain where it came from a little bit more and what to do with it. So to start us off. Well, strengths and trans and all beliefs. And so just over the weekend, think about like one of your maybe you have a favorite song, you don't even realize it. That's why you like it, that it has the Ultimately, you want to find the moment of inertia of these metal discs. Over the years, many changes have evolved in altered classroom dynamics, posing the question, what teaching style offers students the most success? In schools today, there are currently three main teaching styles that can be seen. The most prominent method is the traditional style of teaching, which involves lecture-based learning. This is the method kids are most familiar with as they have grown up learning this way. Due to the increased use of technology, teachers such as Mr. Custodio and Mrs. Ryan have utilized the flipped classroom in order to enhance the student's comprehension of the subject. A flipped classroom creates a setting in which students watch videos at home in order to familiarize themselves with the subject and come into class the next day with questions they have about the assignment attached to that lesson. In recent years, a new teaching method known as blended learning has emerged. Blended learning relies heavily on the use of technology to enhance lessons. Blended learning is a combination of in-class learning and online instruction. This new method has been implemented in surrounding districts such as Huntley and Barrington, but cannot be utilized at McHenry High School until we incorporate a one-to-one -one technology system. In order to analyze the full extent to which certain teaching styles affect our learning ability, we must first see how students are being prepared for high school. Ms. Kozlowskis is an 8th grade math teacher at McHenry Middle School and has been working there for 17 years. With her many years of teaching experience, we wanted to see if Kozlowskis' teaching methods have changed with the involvement of technology as she prepares kids for high school. Teach in a strictly traditional style, so I think you're used to a traditional style from me, but I think you have the skills when you leave me to adapt. Um, for one, I don't think it's appropriate for 8th grade, but two, it's not my teaching style. I really like the contact with my students and getting to know them as I teach them. After speaking with Ms. Kozlowskis, we went to McHenry East High School to ask students and teachers how they feel about new teaching styles. According to a survey of 51 teachers, only a few such as Mr. Custodio's alternative teaching methods. Others rely on traditional methods. However, many teachers admitted they would be open to new teaching styles if they had the necessary technology. We decided to interview former math department chair and current teacher Gina Adams in order to get her opinion of alternative teaching methods. My safest style is very traditional lecture style. Uh, however, I believe that students learn most when they are more of in a, in a collaborative environment. We also interviewed math teacher Tiffany Ryan and asked her the same question. We were curious to hear Ryan's response because we know she attempted to use the flipped classroom two years ago with her freshman geometry students. Whatever works best for that particular lesson is what I tried to use. I do like the idea of a flipped classroom for honors classes and for juniors and seniors only. I think it comes with a lot of student responsibility and motivation. Uh, when students are not ready for that style of uh, classroom, um, I don't think it works out well. If a student is really devoted to their, their studies, the flipped classroom can really de uh, develop some great skills and work well. So I think as long as it is what meets the students needs the best, I think the flipped classroom could be excellent. After hearing what the teachers had to say, we decided to ask students what is their preferred teaching style by simply asking them flipped or I traditional. I like traditional classrooms. I like flipped classrooms. I like flipped classrooms. I like traditional classes. I like flipped classrooms. I like flipped classrooms. I prefer the traditional classroom. I prefer flipped classroom. I prefer traditional. I prefer traditional classroom. I prefer traditional. I prefer traditional. I prefer traditional. 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 I prefer traditional. I prefer traditional. Well, based on prior experience, um, I probably prefer traditional. I prefer flipped. We were unable to find seniors to interview because most have never been placed in a flipped classroom before. Based on a survey taken by 51 juniors at East and West Campus, 42 students hated the flipped classroom and admitted it would need to make some major changes. Only 9 said that they enjoyed it and would like to experience it again. In video interviews we conducted, we saw this negative response toward the flipped classroom confirmed by juniors and sophomores at McHenry East High School. 
However, the flipped classroom received a more positive response among the freshman class, indicating that the teachers have come closer to perfecting this method, making the environment more enjoyable for students. In this survey, we also asked students if they were familiar with the term blended learning. Over half have never heard of it before, but after providing an explanation, 57% of the students were intrigued by this concept. In an effort to learn more about blended learning, we visited Barrington High School to talk with students and teachers who experience this teaching style on a daily basis. Ty Gorman was one of the many administrators who helped bring blended learning to the District of Barrington. He currently teaches one class of sociology, but also serves as the associate principal of curriculum and technology. Blended learning, by definition, is not online learning. It's not just not being in class. Blended learning is any learning that incorporates the, the brick and mortar in class with teachers with some online aspects. Um, what we say about blended learning, it's giving students more control over time, pace, path, and place. So the number one reason we started blended learning was to give students uh, more of a college experience. The other reason we did it was to provide more of that individualized process. After learning more about blended learning from Mr. Gorman, we met with Tom Brennemeyer, his computer science and mobile apps teacher at Barrington High School. Coming from a business background, Mr. Brennemeyer has used blended learning strategies on a daily basis for many years to collaborate with students. It's kind of unusual. We try to make it feel like a software development company. So kids are facing each other, they're talking to each other, we've got music playing in the background. Kids can get up and move around and collaborate. We're trying to encourage being resourceful and uh, for them to learn problem solving skills. I, I come from a business background and I feel that customers are my students are my customers. And so I, I kind of adopted a philosophy like what really works for you? Um, I have a very laid back philosophy about this um, that there are no firm deadlines for the entire semester. I'd rather that a student really poured their heart into something and had the time to spend on it that they wanted to and turn in really excellent work than something that was just kind of lousy because they had to do it Thursday night at 3 o'clock in the morning. Next, we visited Mr. Waxler, a former West Campus teacher and Barrington graduate who teaches 21st century issues in AP government and Barrington High School. We sat down with him in order to learn more about how he uses blended learning strategies. We find that students when they are given individual responsibility and, so, and the freedom in order to pursue those responsibilities, we found that blended learning techniques are really very valuable. It is a way for students to explore how to learn on their own, but always having the teacher as support. I don't believe with blended learning it's any more conducive to students failing, to them not doing their assignments. Uh, the students that aren't doing the traditional assignments probably aren't going to do the blended learning assignments. After discussing the benefits of a blended learning classroom with teachers, we met with Colin McGregor, a junior from Barrington High School, in order to get a student's opinion on this alternative teaching method. We just work facing each other and on our own or in groups. Basically kind of like the lunch, a lunchroom, okay? You sit where you need to sit in order to get something done, eat, converse. I want to say the whole initiative started uh, the, about the middle of the 14-15 school year. So two years later, we've got 10 courses up and running, another 10 to 15 getting ready to launch. After learning about the success of blended learning at Barrington High School, we support the use of this alternative teaching method and encourage its implementation in District 156. We spoke with Ms. Adams again in order to discuss the possibilities. I believe that in a couple years, I, two to five years, I think that uh, this district will be successful in implementing blended learning uh, classrooms. Uh, we've got the tech, we'll have the technology in place. Um, hopefully by that time, the staff and faculty can be trained effectively. Obviously, there are a lot of challenges and tasks we must accomplish as a school before the implementation of blended learning can be a possibility. Along with the introduction of blended learning to schools across the country, the involvement and creation of other teaching styles we've concluded can be effective under the right circumstances with a devoted student.